ますFor our second service, got to see a little of what um, Pastor Wanji has um, on display. We're going to get to hear from her and watch a video. It will only be on this slide. So if when we see the video of the school in Gutumbo, um, you want to move your seat, always know because there's lots of room at this particular worship service. So we invite and welcome you to do that. But we're going to, um, as we start, I'm going to invite, do we have it right up at the beginning? I'm going to invite um, Francesca Melzon to share a little bit more about one of the handouts um, that was available right next to your bulletin. Break this morning to uh, to help illustrate my point. Uh, this morning, in the first service, uh, there was a breakdown in uh, all things technology, which kind of helped me with, um, with with my technology initiative. But we'll pretend everything's broken, broken, and <laughs> move on. Um, okay, so uh, no hard hat or, or uh, boots this morning, um, but this is an opportunity for me to kind of reiterate a couple of things from last week and talk a little bit more specifically about the technology initiative. Um, so where our vision for 2023, we're bravely building a new, and if you could go on to the next one, I just want to um, reiterate, maybe for those of you who weren't here last Sunday, to talk about this, our vision for 2023, um, very much focused on connections, internal connections, people connecting with people um, internally, um, new people and uh, communicating externally, making those external connections, and then, um, having a church home that there where we can make those connections and gather together um very much focused on um making our community or improving our community um as a and growing as a church family um so um with that we have three initiatives one being what i'm calling the technology initiative uh, but that's procuring some hardware um, in order to improve the internal and external communication and this supports all three initiatives. Um, we also, number two is to hire a part-time person to actually take care of that technology and present that technology. Um, and Al is going to talk to you a little bit more about that next week. And then the property, um, person will talk to Katie, will talk to you about the property, um, initiative the following week. Uh, so let's go to the technology initiative. Okay. And go to the, so go to the next chart. So what kind of, so in, in the spirit of Nehemiah, what type of technology did Nehemiah use to communicate <laughs> with everyone building the wall. So he used a trumpet, um, a shofar, as you can see in the picture. And this really um, reminds me, and I relate to this because it reminds me of being at the Naval Academy and on a ship where they use trumpets and bells and whistles and horns, you know, pretty much to tell you when to get up, go to sleep, eat, you know, what, whatever it is, yeah. ship change. Um, so it really kind of rings true to me. Well, we have we're, we're way beyond show parts and trumpets, um, you know, in, in church today. Um, so, but what we could use um, instead to help our communication is some technology, some projectors, laptops, hard drive, cabling, um, and one of the things that that's going to help us, especially with uh, the online, the folks online that are um, that are worshiping online, um, and that will allow this, like when I'm talking into the microphone, instead of another um, speaker picking that up, you know, as it bounces off the walls. And instead, that type, this would go directly into the computer, so the sound would just be, I don't know if anyone has ever um, watched the online version, it's kind of hard to hear sometimes. So this will, um, this will tremendously improve um, that. And I think I have, uh, yeah, significantly improve the online experience, eliminates that background noise, and then, um, because I like, you know, numbers, it will improve the um, operations um, efficiency by at least 75 percent and probably a heck of a lot more than that um, and my cost estimate for this is somewhere around six thousand um, dollars so for 
a, a relatively small investment, we can make some really huge improvements um, in technology and communication. Um, so with that, I'm just going to ask, what, like last time, that you, you know, prayerfully consider a couple of things here. Um, really prayerfully consider this vision and how you can personally um, make that vision happen you know, in this next year. Um, think about what kind of, pray about what kind of time, talent, treasures that you can bring you know, to the community. Um, and you know, if possible, um, increase your uh, contribution and your generosity from the previous years in, in all of those aspects, time, talent, and treasure. Uh, and then uh, uh, a couple of public service announcements on that. Commitment Sunday is November 15th, uh, and then we're going to celebrate the you know the next uh, the next Sunday. Um, you'll be able to fill out an online card. Now, if you prefer to do it that way, you can have there'll be a card you know just like just like you know the insert here. You can fill that out, and uh, we'll tally tally all that and report report out to you the next uh, the next day. If you if you are one of those that, that um, contributes online or has a uh, you know, credit card and automatically withdraws or you know, anything like that, please still fill out the commitment card. Don't forget to do that. Um, that's really important for us so that we can um, so that we can plan for the next year. Uh, that's all I have. And remember, we're all Nehemiah. Thanks to Francesca and her um, team who are hard at work um, and have been and will be for these next um, several weeks. So I invite you to stand as we begin worshiping um, with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, <clears throat> one God, who is eager to forgive, who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together, let us acknowledge our need to open our hearts to both receive and share the love of Jesus. God of compassion and forgiveness, we confess as a hold on us. We have harmed your creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Open our hearts and turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to a new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening refrain of There is a Longing in Our Hearts. everlasting forgiveness. Strengthen our hope in you and grant that all the peoples of the earth may find their glory in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated, and I'd like to invite our children who'd like to come forward to come have a seat right there on the carpeting, and we're going to hear from Pastor Wanji and see a video. So you might want to sit more over on this side, because you can also see the video when we get to that part. 
Good morning, Watoto. Watoto means children. Mm. Say Watoto. Watoto. So if I say Jumbo Watoto, it means hello, children. Okay. I'm so glad to be with you this morning. I come from Africa and in a country called Kenya. All right? And in Kenya, I come from a small village called Vitopo, where I have children just like you. We have three grade, and then we have grade one to six. And I know some of you are in grade two, grade three, grade four onwards, right? So soon you will get to see those children. Now, these children come from very poor families. At home, sometimes they don't get enough food. Some of them do not have shoes. Some of them have only one pair of clothing they wear every day. Sometimes we used to have problems with water and they would only go to wash their, to do their laundry in the river or in a creek, creeks which dry out now and then. But these days we do have water. <coughs> However, when they come to school, we feed them. So do we need money to have them fed? Parents? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. We have water in school. So do we need the money to pump the water? Yes. yes. Now, I'll tell you a little bit more about these children. In their homes, they do not have Bibles. But when they come to school, they get to hold the Bible. On top of that, they get to know all the books of the Bible. And the Bible is made up of two testaments, which are the Old mm -hmm. and, the new. Yeah. and the New Testament. So, Next time when I come, some of you will be able to say all the books of the Bible because that's what we do with our children, right? <coughs> so as these children come to school, uh, we, they don't only go to school, we say it's more than academics. So they learn about the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ, which we find in John 3.16, which says what? For let me hear from you. For God so, God, so that the world that he gave is on his begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should, have should not perish, but have what? Ever lasting. So these children know that they are loved. But now as they go to school, they want in the future to be the ones, to be the leaders in the community. So we call them emerging leaders. They will come and they will check the, the village. So we'll have teachers, we will have doctors, we will have engineers, we'll have people who will change the community just like you. Some of you want to be the president, right? Do you know that you can become a president in the future, right? Yes. So I will welcome you to visit with the children and then after that, listen to them. And then after that, I will talk to the parents, right? Okay. Listen to their name. My name is Elizabeth. I am in grade six. When I grow up, I would like to be a neurosurgeon. I would like to visit USA. I love my school because we have we have storybooks. And we also have kind teachers which helps me and corrects me if I do a wrong thing. Thank you. My name is Beth Yoki. I am in grade 6. I love coming for Sunday school because I want to know about the word of God. When I grow up, I want to go to China. When I grow up, I want to be a chef. Thank you. My name is Emmanuel Boro. I am in grade 5. I am 11 years old. I like this school because we have best teachers. When I grow up, up I, I would like to be a pilot. I would like to, to visit USA. My name is Doris Nyambura. I am in grade 6. 
I love my school because it has core co co values and it teaches us to live, to respect, love and live in unity. My name is Rebutka Skimani. I am in grade 5. I am, in, I am 12 years old. When I grow up, I would like to be a surgeon. I would, I would like to visit England, where the footballers came from. In school, I like reading storybooks from different authors. Breathe in, out, in, out. Free space. Let's jog. What are things? Small tires. The small tires, uh huh? Oh, uh, just their running exercises. The exercises that they do, yes. How was that feel? At one time, it used to be green, but now because there is no rain, the grass is dried up. Mm -hmm. No ground. Yes, uh huh. Yes, Jess. Just dirt. Um, I noticed that um, that baby. Exactly. It's sometimes it's kind of the same what you do in the field, it's also what they do. But you may have noticed that when they go to the field, they do it in their uh, the, the shoes that they use to go to for Sunday school or to go to class and then do our work when you are doing games. Sneakers, right? So they only have one pair of shoes. So as you pray for these children, pray that they will be able to have pens, pencils, exercise books, right? So that they can continue and crayons, yes. And you know, uh, last year when I came here, your pastor allowed me to ship to Africa some of the books from here. Did you hear them saying they love story books? Yes, because we got some. From here. Then you got to hear some of the children saying they want to be surgeons, and a girl said she wanted to be a neuro surgeon. You know what? Her father had an accident and he was in hospital for a long time. And you know who helped to get his back together? A neuro surgeon. So she wants to become a neuro surgeon. Some others want to become nurses, others doctors, engineers. Right, just like I said before. And parents, um, oh, and before I talk to the parents, um, and for you out there, I have pictures of these children. You saw some of them. Go and look for them in the pictures I have out there. Is that a good exercise? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you will. Uh, and parents, um, as you can see, we have about 160 children in the school now. Uh, we started with three, now we have 160. We 
three grades and then grades one to six. These children come from very poor families and the parents are not able to pay school fees. And it's becoming harder for life because when the kids come in the morning, we give them porridge so that they can be able to run and then we give them lunch, a balanced uh, meal. And uh, it doesn't help when you only sponsor one child or baby from a community school, it helps when you sponsor the whole way. So nobody feels left out. But now the kids um, uh, who are in boarding school, uh, who are in primary school, have gone to boarding school secondary, in secondary school. Now, this is not in one school, they've gone to different schools. So they need sponsorship where they are as individual. Others uh, finished secondary school, and in September, five of them joined uh, college, and we have many more who want to join, but again, we need to help them. These kids are in their ages 17, 18, 19, 20. If you want them out there doing nothing, we need to send them to colleges. Most of them, we prefer they go to vocational school where they learn a skill so they can become electricians, they become carpenters, welders, whatever they are good at. And then when they come back to the village, they will be self sustaining, but also help their families and take care of their younger siblings. So I encourage you to partner with us. And I will be going back to, to Kenya uh, in two weeks time. And uh, before then, if you have anything besides finances, anything you would want to share with us, it could be printers, it could be laptops, it could be anything that you, you know, anything that you think might be useful to us in Africa, we're gonna put it in, in boxes and then ship it. But as you donate, also be Mission because to ship a box costs between 250 and 300. Okay, um, but for now, kids, I I thought I don't know whether it was the same group that I taught uh, the bus. Is this is different? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to leave you with the bus that I think is going to help you in your walk with Jesus. Jesus says. When, when Moses in the Old Testament talked about the commandments, he talked about 10 commandments. You remember that, parents? But then Jesus said there are two commandments that help us to get into the kingdom of God. And this is how it goes in Mark chapter 12, verse 28 to 30, and Luke chapter 10, verses 20, uh, 17 onwards. And it says, if you want to enter the kingdom of God, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your mind, with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now let's wrap it back together. So a couple of them learned it in confirmation. Okay, so yes. let's stand up and let's see. But the congregation didn't all get to learn this. Okay, we will all do it together yes. because this is Jesus' message. Mm -hmm. You shall love the Lord oh, your God. God with all of your mind, with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Anybody wants to try that? <laughs> this is the most important. Anybody? Yes, try. Face <coughs> that. We'll do a tap up. We do it together. Face that. Okay. One, two, Strength three. Strength members. Ready? You shall love the Lord your, Lord your God with all your, your, your mind, with all, all your heart, with all, all your soul, with all, all your strength. strength. And your neighbor is yourself. 
by purchasing some of the items they have, or as Pastor Wanji shared, um, in some of the ways um, that um, are available. So one of Pastor Wanji's dreams is that one day, there would be a group of us um, who would actually get a chance to visit Katumbo in Kenya. So we'll see how that might um, that might happen. That might be one of our bigger dreams together. But I do know that I heard at the fundraising dinner on Friday night that some of your board members will be coming um, this year to Kenya. Anyone can join them who's just ready to go to Kenya and um, do all that. But we're going to continue our worship service then by standing and singing our gospel verse as we prepare to hear God's word. So I invite you to stand and sing. Everything that seems to go wrong can. One of the 
tools that I've learned over time to deal with that, with you forgot your wallet, your computer is in charge, there's traffic, whatever those things are, is to be able to find some likeness and some humor in the midst of that. This parable that Jesus tells this morning that we hear in Luke's gospel starts with this preface. These people trusted in themselves. So at Bible study this past Wednesday morning, this country western song that some of you may know came up. My husband talks about it being his theme song. Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. Some of you heard that song? <laughs> okay, if you have not heard that song, go to our website, go up to the little place where it says, I read my blog, but that's okay, I pretty much write it for myself. Um, anyway, so go to where the blog is, click open the blog, and right there at the top of the blog, you will see the, um, I can't remember his name, the country western artist, singing that song with one of the Muppets. So some of you, do some of you remember who the Muppets are from Sesame Street, right? One of the things that was so interesting about Sesame Street is Sesame Street wasn't really just for children. It taught parents as well. But that song, Oh Lord, It's Hard to Be Humble When You're Perfect in Every Way, of course, is what we might call kind of a tongue-in-cheek, kind of a humorous way of looking at things. So in a gospel reading where we hear a parable of Jesus, and remember, these parables were Jesus' one of Jesus' teaching tools, so that this story might kind of walk alongside a person, so it was meant to be kind of alongside you, and you'd be curious. Am I like that Pharisee? Do I think I'm all that? Do I kind of have those moments where I'm like, thank God I'm not like that loser? Or am I like the tax collector where I feel like I can't even hold my head up? Am I somewhere in between? What is the point that Jesus is trying to make Often a parable almost is like a prism where you can look at it from a variety of many different angles. But this particular week where each week I've been encouraging and inviting you to take home some tool to try, I want to invite you to take humor and add that to your toolbox of spiritual tools. It can be such a relief to just be able to laugh. To know that we are human and we will make mistakes. There's a little daily reader that I read and this writer talks about someone she knew who one morning tells her about how in her, she went in the refrigerator and got, you know, the cream out to pour it into her coffee, but instead it was orange juice. Surprise when you take a sip, right? <laughs> But, and this person writes in this little devotional, I couldn't believe she just laughed about it. She said, if it were me and I did that, I'd spend the morning saying to myself how stupid I was, that I didn't look at the label, that I didn't do all these things. That's what Jesus <coughs> wants. He doesn't want us to pull ourselves down, but neither does he want us to have that kind of self-righteousness that often, I'll tell you, you can see it coming from miles away. You know what I'm talking about? Someone who's self-righteous, you feel like it. The glow, it's not a nice one, right? There, you know, that self-righteousness doesn't share the message of Jesus. But humility is not humiliation. To have a humble part, heart is to be teachable. And so Jesus uses this parable about not trusting in oneself, but to learn to be teachable. We pray together a lot. We pray, you know, at meal times when we're together, and maybe some of you do that as well. We pray in the joyous moments, giving God thanks, and our songs can be ways that they become prayers. We may pray in those moments of desperation. We can pray with words, we can pray with gestures. And let's just talk about gestures for a moment. <laughs> Let's talk about gestures that are used in car rides. <laughs> okay, let's just, you're with me, right? We're in a car. There's gestures that are made in cars. 
It used to be back in the day, sometimes there would be people who would hold their hand out the window. Do you remember some of this that way back in the day? Even though there were signals, they would kind of be signaling with their hands. Now there's someone, if they're holding their hand out the window, the signal is a gesture that probably is not one of humility. Probably one of anger and frustration. Because how often does it happen? Well, maybe you even see it. Sometimes people have the bumper stickers of it, right? They tell you what kind of drivers they think you are and what kind of drivers they think they are. Here's what I want to invite you in a humorous way. The next time you might be the one who is the recipient of a gesture in driving. I want you to think of that as a nice greeting. And just laugh. Just laugh about it. Because part of what we have to also do is we let in that kindness and that compassion and that grace and that love. I know that sometimes people's lives are really hard and challenging, and they think it's going to be better by yelling at someone who's driving, giving some kind of gesture. Because instead, we can take what we see in the world and do something different. We can hold things lightly. We cannot put our trust in ourselves, but put our trust in this God who loves us, because actually, behind the windshield, at the driver's seat, or as a passenger, or in the back seat, those are all great times to pray. Some people drive with other people, it drives them to prayer. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> and I'm not necessarily talking about that, it's a whole other thing. But really, what's it like if you actually look to your right, look to your left, and think, how could I pray for that person who's in a car near me? How can I pray for that person where now, you know, going through a red light is just part of driving in Colorado, right? Everyone knows that. When the red, when you're stopped, do not go until you have seen that the intersection is clear. That's just new driving world because everyone's going through red lights. Instead of being self-righteous, could they not follow the rules? Did they not see the red light? You know, and get down that whole thing? What do you offer in prayer for either, they don't know what they're doing, they're in such a rush, they're in consideration, their selfishness, they're not, their disregard for another. You can judge that, absolutely. But it puts you in a seat you shouldn't be sitting in. Because that comes right back around. One of the things that Jesus' parables often invite us to do is see how life will boomerang. That what you put out will come back towards you. So hold things lightly. Be unafraid to let there be laughter when you have made those mistakes. Be sure to ask for God's guidance and grace that when there is hurt and harm, that you access God's gracious forgiveness. Because that forgiving that we speak of in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our sins, trespasses, is an important word as we are forgiven. So let that in. Let that forgiveness of God in so that we don't have to judge one another. We can have compassion for one another. We can be cautious. And sometimes we can just find humor and sing along with a country western star and a Muppet, laughing at ourselves about how, Lord, how hard it is to be humble. Well, you are such a perfect driver, perfect parent, perfect shopper, whatever else it is. Just hold it like this. Let love have the run of your heart and of your lives. That's Jesus' invitation to us all. Amen. So at this time, we'll provide some space for some God study sharing. The battery went out on the last one, uh, handheld microphone I have. I'm going to go for a microphone number two. And I already uh, heard from Eric. I'm going to start with you. Um, Eric's going to share a little something, and this is just an opportunity um, for you to share if um, there's been a way that your heart's been open, there's a joy. Um, you can also share our sorrows too, right? Hi, Eric. I too cook. My, my God's side is pretty simple. 
But when I was thinking about it, this uh, thinking about it this morning, I realized it was just a reminder of how good it is to stand up every every morning, every day. I pray for healing to come back to my left arm. And last Wednesday, I had an IV infusion that was donated to me by a gentleman at the gym. And last Wednesday, <laughs> for the first time in 50 years, I felt like I have a lot of my hair on my body. And it's so exciting. <clears throat> Just remind me of how God does it in prayers. And that's my God said anything to all. <laughs> Some of you may have heard that God sighting a couple weeks ago that someone at the gym offered um, to provide some medical treatment for Eric that's very expensive and outside of insurance and all those things. And now what he was sharing is that he actually has had for the first time in 15 years some sensation in his arms. But let me tell you about one thing that makes my heart so warm is that Eric is such a humble um, sharer of his faith. Um, and when he, when I first met Eric and he shared about the terrible accident that he was in that resulted in so many of his injuries, he had been doing the right thing. And um, sometimes you do the right thing and that doesn't prevent there from being an accident. But never was he judgmental or blaming of that other person. He takes each day and gives thanks. God thanks that he wakes up each morning. So if you don't already know Eric, I hope you'll take that time to know one of the many saints amongst us who um, is the love of God and that forgiveness in the flesh. So other open-hearted moments or God sightings? Share. Okay. Um, my God sighting is um, I met this friend of a woman that hanged out in the library and I tried to help him as much as I can but he's so positive and he's taught me so many things because in a situation you think you'd be angry, frustrated and all that negative stuff he's so positive and I see him as one of God's people, unlike some people that, you know, think they're worthless and all that stuff. But he shines God's light to the world, even if he's not trying to. And I've learned a lot of things from him, and I thank God that God created yeah, thanks, Teresa. Well, you know, we often have talked about, you know, when Jesus said, if you want to find your life, you're going to have to lose it. And one of the best ways to actually, in, in the Jesus way of losing your life, is to practice that kind of compassion and generosity and enter into other people's stories and their lives. It's an amazing gift when you give. Any other God sightings or um, open hearted moments anyone wanted to share? And again, we model these um, so that you might consider how, even in those smallest of ways, you share it at your dinner table, um, you share it with um, another student at school. Um, it's an amazing thing to be able to um, bear witness to love alive and at work in the world. So, anyone else? Are you sharing this about Tilly? And Okay, I don't want to pressure you. Yeah, that's a, no, like if you tell me you're about sightings, I'm not going to pressure you, but I am going to invite you. Okay, you can always say no. There was a complete sentence around here. You all know that I'm a big dog lover. And 
uh, Tilly has been working as a birth therapy trainer for about a year now. And we think we found her niche. Um, I mean, besides being a therapy dog for anyone that wants her here, um, she is a therapy dog for other dogs. And these are dogs that have been traumatized or, you know, for some reason or another, they're not able to connect with either people or other dogs. So yesterday, we're working with the German Shepherd um, with the trainer, trained Bella. And Bella and Tilly have been working together for about six weeks. And they touched noses yesterday. And her owner started to cry. She said that that was the closest that Bella had ever been to another dog. So I just feel so blessed to have this little angel. It's, this is just a really neat calling that she has. Thank you, Bella. Now we at this 11 o'clock worship service, we have two service dogs who regularly join us. Goose, who's back with Eric and Brenda and uh, Tilly. And they're good um, standard poodle friends too. So that's another great way in this faith community is make friends in faith communities too. It's just a way to strengthen that bond with one another. Um, on Thursday, my friend Julia wanted to play basketball and she's always had it for two years now. And she went to the boys and said, can I play it? And they said, no, you're a girl, you can't play. So she told me that on Thursday and I said, you know what, Monday we're gonna go, we're gonna play. And she was just like, okay, sounds cool. And she's just always been a really good friend. Thank you, Lily. <laughs> Any other open-hearted moments, bad sightings? Again, you never know when that knock on your heart um, is God using you to be God's hands and God's love incarnate in the world. So together we'll keep listening. So thank you for that. And now if anyone has looked ahead, oh, Gabby, right away, what song would you like us to sing? Seek first the kingdom of God. And what number is that? It's 783. It'll be up on your, oh, there it is, up on your screen. We'll give Lisa a moment to get it. If you would rather see it in one of your thin hymnals, it's in the blue hymnal. We'll stand and sing verse one of Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God. It's 783. Oh, it's not, it's in the album. Oh, no, it is with one voice. Okay. In um, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God, 783, if you want it in the blue hymnal. Lindsay Sherman, 
Pastor Mark Crates, Pastor Andrea Young, Jack Bell, Mandy, the Smith family, Bob Berryman and Diane Way, Elizabeth, Andrew Wright, and those we have named either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. God of grace, God of restoration, you call us to trust in you and not ourselves alone. Make this a congregation, a community of humility and repentance, ready to encounter you in love and follow in your ways. We give you thanks for Pastor Longi and the mission of Project Adopted Village. We pray for the children and the teachers, the parents and the grandparents of that community in Kakumbo, Kenya, that they would continue to thrive even them in this time of drought, in the poverty that affects their ability to make a living. Be with them that your word would be food for them and that it would help them provide for their physical needs. God of grace. Sure. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and our silent prayers to you, O oh God, praying through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with one another. Then I invite you to be seated and if I could have a couple of volunteers to uh, receive our offering. And just let people raise their hands again. Okay. Yeah, just see if anyone's raising their hand, um, you can hand them their offering. And um, again, thanks for your generosity. It's what makes our ministry possible. Please stand and continue our worship. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make the, these gifts a banquet blessing. Make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who set the table for all. Amen. <clears throat> it was on the very night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he blessed it. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We join together in praying that prayer our Lord Jesus has taught us. United as one, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. So this morning, all of our wafer is gluten-free, and in our small cups, it has our grape juice um, that are light colored, and the rest are wine that are dark colored. Uh, we are few gathered here together this morning, so we'll just invite you to come forward as you feel ready. We're not going to usher you up. So just come stand at ground level um, when there's a space that feels open and comfortable to you, and come taste and see this gift of God for you, God's people.
Please stand. And now, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So Youth Band Rehearsal actually has been canceled. Um, our, a couple of our musicians are either out of town or not feeling well, so I think I've spoken to those who it applies to. It is butter break time, so reach out to me or one of our youth. Um, we're going to hopefully sell a whole bunch of butter braids for youth trips. Enter the story. Those of you who are reading the Bible together, we're meeting on Zoom at 12.30 on Tuesday, 6.30 on Wednesday. Next Sunday, we're red, willing, Chase, Mark, you're ready for it. Uh, <laughs> Brenna, you're ready. But yeah, next week is a red letter day. Uh, it's also confirmation at our second service. Um, families with confirmation age kids, I'll be putting out some requests for some service help. So we're all in this together and coming up, a big campus cleanup. Thanks for everyone who was here yesterday for the potluck. It was a great um, time. There were lots of Middle Eastern sweets left over. I don't know exactly what we're doing with all of those, but some of you will be taking them home to help us out. Please. Um, we'll talk about some of that after we're done here. So take these words to heart. Benedictions are blessings. They are words to walk with you. And this one, you know, comes from the Old Testament. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with all favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is On Our Way Rejoicing. <laughs> Thanks be to God, and we will.